ruffian was a portrait of grace illumined by an inner fire, the swiftest filly in the long and storied annals of the turf. She had drawn thousands of fans to the sport in the early 70s, and her sudden death, following her breakdown in the great match race, formed a watershed moment that would haunt the sport for years, right through that late afternoon at Pimlico when another young phenom, the Colt Barbaro, broke down in the 2006 Preakness. In my own mind, that pair of youthful, strapping three-year-olds, mere teenagers in horse years, will be forever joined in history, in a kind of ode written for two athletes dying young. Indeed, Ruffian and Barbaro were the noblest emblems of the breed, each feated as the rising equine heroes of their times, as if, in Hausman's words, home we brought them shoulder high. The coal black ruffian was not only undefeated in 10 starts, but in fact had led at every pole in every race she'd ever run. Tall and lovely, with the neck of a swan tapering into powerful shoulders, she fairly floated around racetracks in perfect command of her world, moving with an airy grace that mocked her rivals and defied the clock. Barbaro was her kindred spirit, right down to the intertwined branches of their family trees. He never had the chance to match her legend, but he too was a beautifully sculpted statue of a horse, a bay who had won all six of his races. Like Ruffian, Barbaro was a well-muscled overachiever who covered long distances at high speeds. His six and a half length victory in the Kentucky Derby, the triumph that made him a star, was the longest winning derby margin in 60 years and he came home looking for all the world like some latter-day Pegasus taking leave of a burning barn. As he came roaring through that Churchill stretch, I saw fleeting shades of Secretariat and thought, Barbaro's gonna win the Triple Crown. In the end, of course, he did not. He and Ruffian shared star-crossed fates. The filly was put to sleep soon after shattering two bones in her right front ankle. She never had much of a chance. And just eight hours after her breakdown at Belmont, she was gone. Barbaro survived eight months after his injury, in part because he was shipped at once to the most sophisticated large animal hospital in North America. After months of struggle, through bouts of infection and laminitis, his body gave out in January 2007 when the dreaded hoof disease came round a final time. Millions of Americans had followed his fight to live, and his death led evening news shows while commanding front page headlines nationwide, just as ruffians had some 31 years before. And what I remember about them now is that both horses embodied the very hallmarks of their tribe, an indomitable will to win, an alert curiosity in repose, bravery under fire, and best of all, a love of running expressed in their pure, unbridled exuberance for it. It was their joy, writ on the wind. <laughs>